Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Kakwadash. Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in, Hada, Sham, name, Yahweh Shai, being the only God's Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, from Kakwadash, Holy Spirit. Double honor to the apostles and others, great Muslim that rule well. Peace and blessing to the elect of Israel. Shalom and Abba Baal. Back at it again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem El Shai. Lord willing, his lesson is edifying. If you're asking for the kingdom, you're asking for the destruction. Okay? And what I mean by that is you're hastening the day of the Lord, which you should be in that spirit of hastening the day of the Lord. You should be in that spirit of wanting Yahweh Shai to come back. All right? The scriptures speak about how, you know, we're supposed to hasten the day of the Lord. Okay? And the captive hasteneth, you know, that he may be loose from the prison, man. All right? So, yes, you're supposed to be in that spirit of hastening the day of the Lord. But you got to understand, when you're asking for the Lord to return, you're also asking for the Lord to bring judgment and destruction upon this place. Because that has to happen before Yahweh Shai uh, sets up his kingdom on the planet Earth, man. Okay, so with that being said, you know, we want to make sure that our spirits are on point and that we have the boldness and the confidence in the day of judgment that our love was made perfect towards the Lord, that we did what the Lord required of us. All right. You know, that way we may obtain salvation in the sight. And at the end of the day, it's not by our works. Okay. You know, even though the elect are going to have faith and works to back up, you know, their uh, belief in Yahweh Bashem El Shai, if you will. Okay, but at the end of the day, you know, it's really by the great the grace of Yahweh Bashem El Shai and His mercy. Like that's the only reason why, truly, that we're we're making it. Okay, that we're going to obtain salvation. Lord willing, we be of that elect number. You know, so with that being said, I just want to um, bring some precepts out further. You know, backing up the point of what I'm saying. All right. So, this is uh, 2 Ezra chapter 4. I'm going to start at uh, verse 26. Second Ezra 4 and 26, it says, Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. For the world hasteth fast to pass away. That's right. This present world, all right, is, is hasting fast to pass away. Like the scripture say, brethren, the time is short, man. Okay? And they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passeth away. Also, 1 John 2 and 15 through 17 says how, you know, the world passes away, and the lust thereof, man. But he that doeth the will of Yahweh Bashmasha abideth forever, man. So this world definitely is passing away. Okay, and like it says in Second Peter the third chapter, how you know the world shall pass away with the elements melting with fervent heat. So this place is gonna be destroyed by way of ICBM nuclear missiles, man, and, and the laser beams from the chariots. Okay, so we're at the end of this place, man. So you gotta understand that the destruction has to come. Before Yahweh Shai's kingdom is set upon earth, man. All right? Like the scripture said, he must put down all rule and all authority under his feet. That's why when the scripture speak about in Revelation how Yahweh Shai is coming back, it says how he had crowns. All right? Because Yahweh Shai is going to conquer the different nations that are set upon the earth, man. Okay? So part of that conquering is destruction. You know? The Lord is going to bring destruction upon this wicked kingdom. Okay. Verse 27. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. That's right. You see? So the kingdom of heaven, man, it's going to be so, so glorified. Like she would say, I have not seen nor ear have heard. You know, it's going to be incomprehensible. You know, it's just going to be on a whole nother level and magnitude of glory. Okay, but this present world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities, man. Okay, everything, you know, is sickly in this earth. Things promote death. 
and in righteousness. All right, verse 27. But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down into the place, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. That's right. So this place has been sown with evil, right? You see evil all around. Okay, you got, you know, all types of levels of wickedness around this place, man. Okay. But you don't see the destruction. You don't see the destruction just yet. This place is still up and running. But guess what? The destruction is on its way. The judgment of Yahweh Bashem Shai is on its way, man. Okay. And once that comes, then can our kingdom come, which is sown with good. The Lord has to flip this place upside down, man. Or more like right side up, because Esau flipped everything upside down. Get a precept and Isaiah back this up. Isaiah 29 and 16, it says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. Or shall the thing frame same of him that framed it, he had no understanding. That's right. So the Lord, he's going to turn this place up, man. Just like how Esau turned this place upside down, the whole earth is out of course under this devil. Yahweh by Shemesh is getting ready to put everything back in his rightful order and place. Because Esau thought that the Lord didn't know what he was doing when he created creation. Esau has a God complex, for real. He has a very bad case of a God complex. But the Lord's getting ready to uh, turn this place right side up, man. Okay? Let me see something. Hmm. All right, so that's the point of that one right there. This is uh, Zephaniah chapter 2. And I'll start from the top, Lord willing. Zephaniah 2 and 1, it says, Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Right? And that nation not desired is referring to the elect. The elect is being sealed and gathered together in these last days. It says, Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, right? The day of the Lord's destruction. So the elect are going to be sealed up prior to that destruction, man. Going back to Revelation, the seventh chapter, you know? So the Lord's telling the elect to get gathered together, man. So, you know, we have to pretty much come, come towards this truth, man. That's us being gathered together. We're being gathered together by the word of the Holy One, like it says in the book of Baruch, man. So we are being gathered together by this truth. All right. So that destruction won't officially come to the elect to get fully sealed. Revelation 7 and 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. That wind is going to the destroying wind in Jeremiah 51. Okay. You know, and the earth being hurt, the trees being hurt is the nuclear missiles hurting this place. All right, burning it with fire. Joel 2 and 3, a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Referring to the nuclear missiles, man. Okay? Verse, uh, I get another scripture to back up how the vegetation is going to get destroyed. The Lord said he's going to bring upon Babylon rough caterpillars, man. That's in the book of Jeremiah. Those rough caterpillars represent the nuclear missiles. Okay? Because when you look at missiles, certain missiles, they're shaped like caterpillars, man. You know? And on top of that, their caterpillars eat up vegetation. They eat leaves. So the fire from the nuclear missiles is going to be like rough caterpillars, man. But this is another scripture backing this up about how the, the missiles are getting ready to bring their destruction. Second Ezra chapter 15 Starting at verse uh, 41, it says, Fire and hail 
and flying swords. That fire, the hail, the flying swords represents the nuclear missiles. And many waters that all fields may be full and all rivers with the abundance of great waters. Those waters represent the military troops in the midst of World War III. Okay? Like you speak about how the enemy shall come in like a flood. Also, also Psalms 124 talks about the proud waters. That's, that's the water being personified. All right? And that's talking about the military soldiers coming in like a flood. All right? Here's the point. Verse 42. And they shall break down the cities and walls. Mountains and hills, trees of the wood, and grass of the meadows, and their corn. That's right, man. So those missiles are going to uh, destroy the land. All right? You know, there's plenty of scriptures going to that. Okay? Malachi 4.1. What does it say? Shall leave neither root nor branch. You know? Habakkuk 3 and 8 says how it was the Lord's anger against the rivers. You know, because even the missiles are going to dry up the water. Jeremiah 7 and, 20, 7 and 20 says, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beasts, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground. And it shall burn and not be quenched. That's right. That's what the, the missiles are getting ready to do. So it's going to burn up man and beast, you know, and the, the trees, the ground, the waters. This whole place is going to become one big desert. All right. Ezekiel 38 and 20. So that the fishes of the sea and the towel and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake in my presence and the mountains shall be trodden down shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground I'm talking about when the lord shakes this place from the nuclear missiles man okay so going back to second 15 and 42 i'll read it again and they shall break down the cities and walls mountains and hills trees of the wood and grass the metals and their corn and they shall go steadfastly unto Babylon and make her afraid. Talking about the missiles. And this is the destruction that must first come and before Yahweh's kingdom gets set up upon the earth, man. Second Ezra 15 and 12. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring upon it. That plague, that punishment is the nuclear missiles, man. All right. Zechariah 14 and 12 goes into that. Okay. Egypt's going to get hit with plagues again. America is modern-day spiritual Egypt. Revelation 11 and 8 tells you that. The place which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, meaning they crossed out the way of life of Yahweh Shire in this place, man. Okay? That's why the true men of the Lord get persecuted and are, and are demonized in the society and outcasted. All right? And this place is spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt because it takes on the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah and it takes on the spirit of bondage of the Lord's people like Egypt. Okay. And also uh, America has a lot of Egyptian, you know, paraphernalia in this society. When you look on your dollar bill, you see the, the, the pyramid with the all seeing eye. Okay. A lot of uh, the, the Washington Monument. All right. The obelisk in, in Central Park. Those are those. That's, that's Egyptian paraphernalia right there, man. Okay. And the, and the obelisk represents a fallacy symbol, man. Or a phallic symbol, all right, a male's reproductive organ, put it that way, okay. So that goes to show you this place is all about sodomy, all right. But nonetheless, you know, you also have a place in uh, Tennessee called Memphis, all right. Memphis is in Egypt, okay. You know, the Statue of Liberty that was supposed to originally be sent off to Egypt. But it got shipped and redirected to America, which is spiritual because, you know, America is spiritually Egypt. Okay. Nonetheless, second Ezra 15 and 13, it says, They that till the ground shall mourn for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with the fearful constellation. That's right. How Bashamashah is going to bring that blasting, that hail upon this place, man. He's going to bring that destruction upon America with the nuclear missiles. Okay. So that's the point on that right there. So going back to Zephaniah 2 and 3. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness, 
It may be you shall be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. That's right. And that's what we pray. We pray, Yahweh Bashmashai, hide us in those chariots. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay? Because the wicked, they're going to get exposed to it, man. You know, we pray, Yahweh Bashmashai, have mercy on us, man. Okay? Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter down into thy chambers. The chambers represent the chariots. Psalms 104 and verse 3 tells you that. Okay? Because the chariots have rooms inside of them. It says, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. That's right. And we pray that Yahweh Bashem al Shai hide us in that day from his indignation via his mercy. Okay? Because even the remnant are going to be affrighted, as the scriptures say in Revelation, the 11th chapter. All right? That's how bad the destruction is going to be. Even the remnant, the elect, are going to be affrighted at the judgment of the Lord, the destruction of the Lord, man. Even in the chairs, the elect are still going to be fearful. Like, wow, the Lord ain't nobody to be played with now. Okay? So this is, so, you know, you got to understand, this is what you're asking for when you're asking for the kingdom of heaven. Okay? When you're asking for the Lord to save us and get us out of this place, you're asking for this place to be destroyed. All right? Because it comes hand in hand with it. So you got to understand, the destruction and the judgment is going to come heavy, man. So we pray that the Lord prepare our spirits and build us up in order to uh, have mercy on us, you know, and, and we be acceptable in his sight, man. Like Yahweh Shai told us to pray for Luke 21, starting at verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Surfeiting is like excess in the flesh, you know, excess of eating. All right. Excess of indulgence. It says, and drunkenness and cares of this life. Right. We don't want to get caught up with the cares of this world, man. We got to stay like pilgrims, man. All right. And, and, and be strangers to this world and be focused on, you know, our journey towards the kingdom. Like she would say, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. All right, because if you get too caught up in this world, like it says, and so that day come upon you un unaware. So you get too caught up in this place. The day of the Lord is going to come upon you as a thief in the night because you're not paying attention. You're not watching. You're not staying circumspect. Verse 35, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That's right. The day of the Lord is going to be a snare to the people of the earth who are not paying attention, especially the, the judgment of the Lord when the time of that sea hip. The sea hip is going to be as a snare. All right. To all that dwell on the face of the earth, man. Besides the elect, of course. All right? But everybody's going to be tried. Everyone's going to have to go through that hour of temptation. But the elect are going to be kept from it. All right? Luke 21 and 36. It says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And that's what we need to pray for. That Yahweh Bashmashai makes us worthy. To obtain salvation in order to receive our crowns and stand before you how we shy man Abaratazah. so if you're asking for the kingdom to come you're asking for the lord to uh save us out of here and you're also asking for the lord to destroy this place and there's nothing wrong with that but you just got to understand when it comes it's coming man all right and the lord ain't gonna hold back no punches so we pray the lord build us up for these times that we're coming into because like the scriptures say jeremiah 30 and 7 Daniel 12 and 1, we're coming into a time of trouble the world has never seen before, man, ever since there was a nation. All right, the most troublesome and perilous times there's ever been in human history. We're getting ready to enter into these. We're actually in these times, man. All right, you know, Jacob's trouble, okay. Of course, you know, like, like the apostle said, you're not going to need to ask in that day, are we in Jacob's trouble? You're going to know. But we're already in the beginning stages of it, man. When you really think about it, you know, the beginning of sorrows like your house I spoke about, man. You know, so really it's already here. It's at the doors, man. Okay? But it's gonna it's gonna continue to increase and get worse and worse, man. So we pray the Lord build us up. Okay. And for all you people out there, all right. This is a Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And that's the question that you have to ask yourself. You desire the day of the Lord. What end is it to you? Is it for salvation or is it for judgment? 
And how you answer that is according to your conduct. Does your conduct measure up and line up to what deserves, for lack of better words, salvation and mercy? Or does your conduct line up to what is will be rewarded judgment and destruction? Okay? You know? What end is it for you, man? If you're asking for the day of the Lord, then you're asking for woe. You're asking for sorrow and distress. You're asking for death and destruction. So, well, one to you that desire the day of the Lord, man. All right, you Christians, you think that you you ready for the day of the Lord, but you're really not, man. Okay, you don't you don't want America be, to be destroyed. A lot of you Christians, you love it here, man. Okay, so what one to you that desire the day of the Lord, because when you ask for the day of the Lord, that's what you're asking for. You're asking for woe, man. You're asking for destruction. Okay. Verse 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. That's right. So judgment is just going to keep coming and coming, man. You escape one judgment, which what you think you escape, like 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 that uh, movie Final Destination. You know, people thinking that they cheated death, but death always came back around and caught their ass, man. OK. You're not going to be able to escape the judgment of the Lord. It's really just a matter of the Lord snared you up with one judgment, allowed you to to escape it just to run into another one, man. Okay. Um. Let me get this priest up. Ezekiel 7 and 15, it says, The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. That's right, man. So you're not going to be able to escape the Lord's judgment. Okay? One way or another, you're going to get, you're going to get jacked up, man. <clears throat> All right? This is um Let's see, let me get this one. Oh sorry. It's okay. Uh, let me get this one real quick. Um Second Ezra 16 and 22, for many of them that dwell upon earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. That's right. So you're not going to be able to run from the Lord's judgment, man. Okay? You're not going to be able to run from Yahweh Bashmashah's judgment, man. All right? So that's why it says, as if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Verse 20, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it, man. That's right. So the day of the Lord is going to be a dark, gloomy day. And what else is going to make it dark? The soot, all right, the smoke from the missiles, man. Okay. Those missile clouds is going to darken up the earth in that day because of the nuclear destruction. All right. So it's going to be a dark day in Babylon when the missiles get destroyed, man. And destruction is at the doors. Jeremiah 17 and 15. Behold, they say unto me, where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. And that's the scoffers of our people. Our people steady scoffing, steady asking, where's the word of the Lord, right? You niggas been saying the Lord coming. You've been saying that we're in the last days, right? Make sure to say, in the last days, scoffers shall come walking after their own lusts. So a lot of Jake, they mock us. All right. And they don't take heed to what we say through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemashiach from the scriptures because they ultimately don't believe. Verse 16, as for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Right. So Jeremiah is saying, look, I didn't fall out from your truth, Lord. Neither have I desired the woeful day. Right. Meaning Jer Jeremiah wasn't in that spirit like, you know, hey, where, 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 where the day of the Lord at? 
in that scoffer spirit like these niggas be doing. They're desiring the woeful day. Woe unto you that, that you know. Okay, like we read back in Amos, man. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Because when you're desiring the day of the Lord, okay, you got to understand that. <laughs> you're desiring woe. You're desiring destruction. Because the day of the Lord is woe and destruction. Okay? You got to understand what you're asking for, man. You know? And a lot of people, they want the day of the Lord to come. Because they're scoffers and they don't believe. But the thing is, they don't truly want that day to come. Because when it comes, they're going to get judged. And they're going to get put to death in that day. So really, they don't understand what they're asking for. Okay? It says, thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before thee. Right. And we got to meditate and speak on and think the right things, man. Things that are upright. Okay? You know, don't be like a two-third hastening the day of the Lord. Not knowing exactly what they're asking for, man. Because you ask for the day of the Lord, you're going to get it all right. But you better hope that you're ready for it, man. Speaking to myself first and foremost. All right? Even Ezra, the prophet said, Woe is me, woe is me. Who shall deliver me in those days, man? Talking about the day of the Lord. And Ezra, he was a man of the Lord. Ezra's for sure of the elect. And even Ezra, the man of the Lord, was like, Shit, who's going to deliver me from those days, man? Okay? Because it's going be to be a destructive day, man. The day Yahweh Bashmashai returns and destroys this place. And even coming into the times of Jacob's trouble. All right. Second Ezra 16 and 17. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mournings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? You see? So... What are we going to do when these evils come? We're going to walk up brightly before the Lord and trust in Yahweh Shai. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay, so, you know, in order to be stable in these times, we're going to need the wisdom and knowledge of Yahweh Shai. No ifs, ands, or buts. Nothing else is going to be able to save us, man. This is Isaiah 5 and 19. Let me start at 18. Isaiah 5 and 18. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with the cart rope. And that's the thing about Jake. Jake's wickedness. It's like a, just a, a, a rope, a long ass rope that you put around a cart, man. Just, 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 you know, steady pulling out iniquity unto iniquity, man. It says that say, let him make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. That's right. So the Lord is letting. So the Lord is telling, speaking through Isaiah, saying you got two thirds of our people. They want the day of the Lord to come. Not because they want to get out of Babylon, not because they believe, all right, but they come in the spirit of an unbeliever and they come in the spirit of a scoffer saying, oh, let the Lord come. You've been saying he coming, so let him make speed. Let's see it. All right. But but if you ask for that day, you better make sure you prepared for it, man. You know, they're desiring the woeful day, like it says in, uh, you know, um, Jeremiah. Okay, but they don't understand what they're asking for, man. Okay. Zephaniah 1 and 12, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves. That's right. So the Lord, he's putting a light to everybody's works. He's getting ready to expose everyone's works. And it says he's going to punish the men settled on their leaves. So the ones who are comfortable in the society, the leaves represent the dregs and the, the fruit extracts. <laughs> hey, call about your mouth shot. That's funny. Um... So like you, but nonetheless, uh, basically the leaves represent the fruit extracts. Okay, like the grape extracts from from the from the wine that gets settled at the bottom of the glass if you don't stir it up. You know, so a lot of these people they're they're comfortable in the society. They're not stirred up in the spirit to serve the Lord and to and to and to hate this wicked society. Okay, so the Lord is going to punish them. All right, like it says Micah 2 and 10, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. This place is not our rest, man. Okay? Now it says, that saying in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Right, and that's the type of spirit that they come in, you know, they come in the spirit of, oh, yeah, the Lord ain't coming back. The Lord ain't going to do shit. That's pretty much the type of spirit they're coming in. The Lord won't do good, neither will he do evil. They don't believe Yahweh Bashmashai coming back anytime soon. You know, but th that's, that's all going to come to an end. This is uh, Ezekiel 12 
and 27, it says, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say the vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesied of the times that are far off. Yeah, they think Yahweh Shai ain't going to come back till 100 years from now. You know, till they're dead and gone. You know, they don't think Yahweh Shai come back in this generation, but they'll be surprised to see Yahweh Shai, he coming back a lot sooner than everyone thinks, man. Okay? Therefore, they say the, unto them, thus saith the Lord power, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord power. That's right. And that's through the spirit. Because something I've been meditating on lately is Yahweh Bashem Shai. I've been manifesting things a lot faster, man. You know? So you got to watch what you say. Watch what you think. Because Yahweh Bashem Shai have been manifesting things a lot faster. All right? You know, for edification's sake, just yesterday through the spirit, I was doing a lesson and I brought up, you know, getting distracted like a dog gets distracted by, by, by a squirrel <laughs> and literally you know not too long ago when i just laughed uh you know i'm with my dog right now just went on a little walk okay and I, right now we're just chilling and uh <laughs> i seen that he stood up and like something caught his attention so i was looking to see what caught his attention you know and surely shortly after there was a squirrel hopping off in the grass in the distance <laughs> you know so that was just spiritual, man. So the Lord been manifesting things a lot faster. So these people, they're going, these scoffers, man, they're going, they're going to get put to silence, man. Okay. Second Peter three and verse three, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? And that's what you see. You see a lot of scoffers saying, oh, you've been saying that the Lord was coming back. You've been saying we're in the last days. Where's the promise of his coming? Right. Well, guess what? Yahweh about is getting ready to show his coming, man. And when he comes back, he's coming back to bring destruction. Yahweh Shai said it. Think not that I'm coming to bring peace, but a sword, man. Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring destruction, man. The day of the Lord is going to be a dreadful day. So make sure through the Spirit you continue to pray before Yahweh Shai to prepare us for that day. It says, for since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. That's right. So they think that shit is sweet, but they're going to find out that it's not, man. So... Just understand, you're asking for the day of the Lord, you're asking for destruction. You know, so with that being said, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, about Shem Yahweh Shai, about Shem Kadash, double honor to the Apostle, Elders, great most, and ever well, peace and blessing to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all.